Okay, so let's consider the equation y equals x plus 4. We want to fill in this table with some solutions to that equation. So that is x's and y's that when you plug into that equation make it true, make the equation true. Okay, so the first one's been done already. If x is negative 5, we could figure out the y by putting the negative 5 in for the x. You add them and you get y would be negative 1. So that means negative 5, negative 1 is a solution to that equation. If you put in a negative 5 for x and a negative 1 for y, that equation is true. Okay. Do the same thing where I put in a negative 2 for the x now. Right? So y is going to be, replace the x with a negative 2, plus 4, and you get 2. So the point that is the solution is negative 2, 2. It's the x and the y. Negative 2, 2. All right, and then we do the same thing for 0. y equals, replace the x in the equation with a 0, and you get 4. So my ordered pair, x comma y, is 0 comma 4. And then one more, will you do 3? y is going to be 3 plus 4, which is 7. So my ordered pair is 3 comma 7. Okay, so far? Seems familiar? All right, so I'm going to plot these four points, or ordered pairs, on the grid. The first one's already plotted, negative 5, negative 1. So remember when you're plotting points, the x always tells you left or right, and the y tells you up and down. So for negative 2, comma 2, we're going to go negative 2 on the x-axis, 2 on the y-axis, and plot our point. And then the next one is 0, 4. So the 0 tells us we don't move for x, and the 4 means go up 4 for y. And then 3, 7, that's right 3, up 7. Right 3, up 7, plot that point. And then we're going to connect those four points with a line. If you have a straight edge, that's good. If you don't, just do the best you can for now. So that is the line y equals x plus 4. Every point on that line makes that equation true. What quadrants does this line pass through? One, two, and three. Good, yeah. So the quadrants, you start in the upper right, and that's quadrant one, and then you number them counterclockwise. So this is two, this is three, and this is four. And traditionally, they're labeled with Roman numerals. I don't know why. Seems silly, but that's what we do. So that line goes through quadrant one. It's in quadrant one. It's in quadrant two for a little bit. And then it's in quadrant three for the rest of the time. So one, two, and three. Good? All right. All right, so the rest of the class, we're going to be working on solving equations that just have one letter in them. So that y equals x plus 4, there was an x and a y. Now we're just going to think about x. So if I wanted to solve the equation 1 half x equals 5 thirds times x minus 65, one technique would be to distribute that 5 thirds. The first thing to do would be distribute that 5 thirds. There's an alternate solution method that avoids a lot of the fraction stuff we have to deal with if we do this distribution first. So I'm going to do, go through both of these methods, and um, you can pick which one you like the best. It's totally up to you. Um, let me just I'm gonna cover up the work here for myself, and I'm going to go over it. Oh, that's a square. Hold on. All right, so you've got the work all written out for you, so you don't need to take notes right now, but you can just kind of, kind of watch and digest. Um, take notes if you want to. All right, so if I'm starting out with the equation 1 half x equals 5 thirds times x minus 65. If my first step is to distribute the 5 thirds, which might feel um, natural to you to start with distributing, right? Then we're going to have 5 thirds x 
And then I have to do 5 thirds times 65. So I got to figure out what is 5 thirds times 65. So here's going to be my little side work over here. I have to figure out what is 5 thirds times 65. So I could do that on a calculator, or I would multiply the fractions by just multiplying the tops and the bottoms, right? So 65 times 5, 325. How'd you do that so fast? Who answered that? You saw the answer on the paper. OK, that was good. <laughs> if I was going to do that in my head, I would do 65 times 10 and then cut it in half, right? Because 5 is half of 10. 65 times 10 is 650. If you cut 650 in half, you get 325. 325 thirds. So let's just leave it like that. 325 thirds. All right, so we had to do a, a, some multiplication with fractions. All right, now I want to bring all the x terms to one side. So I want to move this 5 thirds x to the left. So I'm going to have 1 half x minus 5 thirds x equals negative 325 thirds. So I have to be able to do that subtraction, right? I have to do 1 half minus 5 thirds. I need a common denominator, which would be what? Six. six. Okay, so this fraction I'd multiply by three over three. This one I multiply by two over two. And so I'm gonna be doing three over six minus 10 over six, which is negative seven over six. So I have negative seven six x equals negative 325 thirds. All right, so that was combining the x terms. Next, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 6 sevenths, right? Because that's the reciprocal of 7 sixths. Same thing as dividing by 7 sixths. So I'm going to multiply this by negative 6 sevenths and multiply this by negative 6 sevenths. So on the left, that's easy because I know that's going to make a 1. That was the whole point of multiplying by negative 6 sevenths. So that gives me x. But then I have to multiply these guys. So let's see, I could reduce 3 goes into 6 twice. So I could do this. And then 325 times 2 is 650, and I get 650 sevenths. Because I have a negative times a negative, so it comes out positive. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Because I don't think 7 and 650 share any common factors. Um, I could change it to a mixed number, but I'm just, I, think, I don't think that that's any simpler than the improper fraction. All right, so there was a lot of ugly fraction stuff happening in there, right? Not everyone is a huge fan of dealing with fractions. So here's method two. Method two clears all the fractions. Okay, so that you don't have to do a lot of arithmetic with fractions. So let's rewrite the equation. We've got 1 half x equals 5 thirds times x minus 65. So my key step here is that I want to get rid of the fractions. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 6. What was special about why did it, why 6? It was the common denominator. Okay, so we multiply everything on both sides by 6. So multiply everything here by 6. Multiply this whole side by 6. Okay. All right, what is 6 times a half? Three. 3. So my left side becomes 3x. 5 thirds times 6, what is that? 10. Yeah. You do 6 times 5 is 30. 3 times 1 is 3. 30 over 3 is 10. So that simplifies to 10. 5 thirds times 6 is 10, and we still have the x minus 65. No more fractions. How did I get 10? I did 5 thirds times 6. 30 thirds, which is 10. Well, you don't have to multiply the 6 times the x minus 65? Great question. No, you don't. Because x minus 65 is some quantity, right? Once we know what x is, you do x minus 65, it's just some number. Right, right. 
So if I was going to multiply 4 times 2 times 6, right? If I multiply the 6 times the 4, do you also multiply the 6 times the 2? No. no you, don't, you only have to do the multiplication once. So in our case, it looked more confusing because instead of a 2, maybe we had an x minus 65, right? But if you do this multiplication, you don't also do the one in the middle. Does that make sense? Breaking it up so yeah, I'm rearranging the order. Yes, I'm going to saving that for later. Yep. Okay, so now I have no more fractions, and I can solve this um, without having to do so much fraction arithmetic. So now I just have 3x, distribute my 10, and I get 10x minus 650. That's when I did the times the x minus 65. Then I'm going to bring all my x's to one side. So 3x minus 10x is negative 7x. And I'm left with a negative 650 over here. Divide both sides by negative 7. And we get x equals 650 sevenths. Same answer as before. So it is completely up to you which method you like better. Um, Totally your choice. All right, so that is my brief review. Um, now I'm going to have you jump to these activities. There are answers to all of these problems, though when you're solving an equation, you should always be able to check the answer on your own by plugging back in. But if you go just a couple pages further, up to answer key to the activities. If you finish early, there is even more practice, right? If you finish early. Don't feel like you need to get here. Um, just if you need it. It's only homework if you need it. It's not assigned homework. So you should be able to get to page three, four, up through page five.